Hey everybody, welcome to the Canadian Shield. Doing my best to make sense of the madness. This video has one clip, one subject, one topic. It has uh, Stephen Gilbert and a minister from Manitoba. Now, <clears throat> what's important to understand in here is he's going to say a term I asked a question through an order paper. And I don't want you to get the wrong idea, so I'm just going to explain it to you quickly and then we'll jump right in. When you when you hear the term order paper, that's legal parlance for placing an order, not giving a direction. So instead of thinking it more like the army that gave him an order, think of it more like McDonald's. I ordered my, you know, hamburger or whatever it is, right? Okay. Mr. Speaker, last week the Environment Minister revealed the truth about the carbon tax. I asked how many emissions are directly reduced from the carbon tax in an order paper question. The minister, this minister's response was, and I quote, the government does not measure the annual amount of emissions that are directly reduced by federal carbon pricing. Wow. End quote. These are his words, not mine. Why is the minister forcing Canadians to pay his carbon tax if he doesn't measure the emissions he pretends to reduce? Wow. The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, what the member is saying is simply not true. Just before Christmas, we put out a study by Environment and Climate Change Canada that shows that carbon pricing will be responsible for between 20 and 30 percent of our greenhouse gas emissions between 20, 2019 and 2030, Mr. Speaker. On the issue of carbon pricing and climate change, we have no lessons to take from the Conservative exactly. Party, whose official position is still today, as Alberta is suffering from droughts, as we're seeing unforeseen storms in eastern Canada, atmosp atmospheric rivers in BC, their position is still that climate change simply does not exist. The Honourable Member from Dolphin Swan River, Nipawa. Mr. Speaker, shame on the Liberals for telling Canadians that their costly carbon tax is reducing emissions. It's a complete scam. Wow. The Minister pretends that his carbon tax reduces emissions, but now we know that the Liberals do not measure the results of their carbon tax. No measurement, no results. No wonder emissions went up after eight years of his NDP Liberal government. Why did the Environment Minister mislead Canadians about his carbon tax scam? Uh -huh. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, the falsehoods that we hear from the Conservative Party on the issue of climate change and carbon pricing is seen before in the history of this country. So first, they believe that climate change doesn't exist. That's simply not true, Mr. Speaker. They say that our plan isn't working. Our plan has allowed us to reduce... The Honourable Member, I'm having difficult... Colleagues, I'm having difficulty hearing the Minister respond to the question. I'm going to ask him to start from the top. Please, can you please withhold your comments so that the Speaker can hear it? The Honourable uh, Minister for Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You want to know the truth? Climate change is real. That's the truth. You want to know the truth? Climate change is impacting Canadians all over the country, including farmers from coast to coast, Mr. Speaker. You want to know the truth about climate change? It's costing Canadians billions of dollars. That's the truth about climate change. Our plan is working. We are reducing emissions. We're helping Canadians with affordability. That's the truth, Mr. Speaker. Well, 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 well. The liberal Mr. Minister who always thinks wants everybody to think that he's all calm and is the victim of a target on his back seems to have quite a bit of a temper when he doesn't get his own way. Seems to want to throw a tantrum when he doesn't get his own way. What I heard him say is that he was first accused. Of, he, he wasn't accused. So let me break down what happened here. The member from uh, Manitoba sent an order paper and now i told you at the beginning that means he sent a request he wants to, he's making an order like a like a restaurant for an answer though right and they these order papers fly back and forth across parliament all day long every single solitary first question that you hear about in the question period 
it's an order paper. I want to ask you this, the, every, the first question, the second question, they, they, they can free ball, but the, the first question is sent to parliament, like to the government, and they have to approve whether or not they're going to answer it today. And that's done on what's called an order paper. So he sent an order paper because the minister from Manitoba wanted to know how many emissions these, this carbon tax was reducing. And the environment minister's office sent back, we do not keep track of that. So he stood up in the House of Commons and he said, wait a second. He doesn't even know how, what kind of uh, positive or negative impact the carbon tax is having on the environment because he doesn't have a clue. It's not being tracked. And then the environment minister stands up and said, well, Environment Canada says, which is, you know, not, that's the... That's the, not the government group. I mean, I, I guess they're part of the government, but they're the scientists, right? Not the lawyers. They say that it, it should have a significant impact on the CO2 emissions between 2019 and 2030. So if you put anything in, in, into motion, or if, if, if you haven't seen impact in 12 years, then you probably haven't done anything right. That's really kind of, sketchy that's really kind of non-committal that's really kind of a half answer so then the environment the minister from manitoba stands up and says well this seems like a scam because you're not keeping track of it and now all you're telling me is that it's going to be 12 years then this environment the environment minister gilbo stands up and tries to say well how dare they climate deny which of course is not you can't put words in other people's mouth and expect them to just let that happen that's that's a, a far left communism idea i get it but in the real world where people are free to say what they want they're not going to allow you to slander them they're not going to allow you to say something about them that may or may not be true you got to prove you got to back up your statements and so in true parliamentary standing they said something they yelled at them they, they saw they they they, they uh, heckled them is the word now the chair can't hear him so he tries to re uh, regain decorum from the house but in the meantime mr gilbo has lost his temper he's not used to people telling him that he, they don't agree with him and there's nothing that he can do about it he's used to only talking in an echo chamber where he goes to china on a jet and where he goes to dubai on a jet but you have to stop having wood burnt pizza anyway so then he snaps do you want to know the truth? Do you want to know the truth? And you see the facial expressions? He's slamming his hands down. He's just acting like a complete, I don't know, like a child who's not getting his own way. Like it seems to be that, it seems to me that that was a very immature response to his own answer, right? His own answer. And so he says he's, that it's saving Canadians billions of dollars, but how could he know if he's not keeping track of it? We do know that it's costing Canadians billions of dollars. We know that it's expensive for food now. We know that it's expensive for everything. We know that this tax that he is putting on everything that you touch, it, we don't know how much of the energy of the environment is saving. We know that there's no way in the world it's compared to what the amount of carbon that the coal fire electrical plants in China or the um, burning that they do in India is throwing up into the air. We know that there's nothing Canada can do to stop that. We know that. But he wants you to believe that it's going to make a change because he says so. His own office says that they're not keeping track of it, but somehow the facts got to be ignored, right? That the evidence has to be only what he says because he says so. This fanatic, this environmental Greenpeace crazy man who act now that we see, right? We see the true, the true colors of this minister who wants to walk around on TV with his glasses and wide-eyed going, oh no, I'm such a victim. And then as soon as he loses his temper, you notice he took the glasses right off his face. That's a strange thing. It's the first time I've ever seen him do that and I've been watching Parliament for a while. But he's mad. He's mad because how dare they defy him. This is what fascism looks like. All right, I think that it's a scam. I think that if they were really trying to tell me that it was making an impact, they would be keeping track of it. They have no idea what it's doing. That's the point of it. Oh, it's going to make a difference in the next decade. So will the Paris Accords, and we don't have to pay any tax for that. So what are you talking about? You know what I mean? What do you, what do you mean? 
seems like very, uh, I'll, it seems very um, fraudulent in, in my opinion. And they're using the term scam, but I think that they're intentionally gaslighting Canadians into thinking that they're doing something that they're really not so that they can take Canadians' money and spend it on God knows what. I know that's my opinion. I uh, want to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.